Hello everyone, welcome back to Coder and Boots. So in the last video we discussed on uh, about how to deploy a website uh, in a web server which is uh, running on AWS EC2. So in this video we are going to discuss about uh, how to attach a friendly name, a domain name uh, to a website and enable the HTTPS URL. If you see in the last uh, video we have uh, hosted something which is rendering from an IP address. So if you start, if you get everything uh, from an IP address, who will remember this IP address? We need a friendly name, right? So <clears throat> if you see, uh, like I mean the friendly name concept. So anything, okay, let's ping google.com. Google.com, okay. So google.com is just a friendly name. It is rendering back to something like this, okay. So it is rendering back to some address, okay. So uh, ping facebook.com. Okay, if you see, if you ping facebook.com also, so it's all rendering back to an address inside and this address is mapped to some uh, friendly name, okay, and we use that friendly name for accessing uh, from the end user side. So here also what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a friendly name uh, to this IP address so that we don't have to remember this IP address every time and users can easily access the site. So for that I need a domain name service. So I'm going to use uh, Google's domain name service. So here I have uh, the domain coder in boots.com with me. I'm going to create a new entry here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new record. In this new record, create new record. I am going to create an A record. Okay, A record I'm going to create. And what is the IP? IP address is this one, right? So I am going to keep my IP address here on the right hand side. So 3.86.160.61, okay, this is the IP address and <clears throat> I am uh, going to create a subdomain, okay, which is maybe let's say uh, site.coderinboots.com. Site so I just need to type site because coderinboots.com is the domain. I already have this. So when I type site, it will create a subdomain site.coderinboots.com. So let's save this entry and see what happens. So Google's domain service is very good. So it uh, it usually gets reflected very quickly. So uh, let's see whether it starts rendering from uh, site dot domain. <clears throat> it will take usually some time. Okay, so it is very quick. So sometimes it takes up to forty eight hours. But in uh, in personally based on my experience. Uh, with Google, it has not taken, uh, like, I mean, it, it usually comes or reflects the changes in few minutes. So here, now you see site.coderinboots.com, it is accepting, okay, so the site is up, but still you see the not secure warning here. The reason is, it is serving in HTTP, okay, I want to get this in HTTPS. Now let's type HTTPS here, <clears throat> still. It doesn't have an HTTPS entry here. That's why it is giving site can't be reached. So we'll see how to configure HTTPS for a website which is hosted on Nginx. Okay, so let me open the putty again. So for this, what we need is, I'm going to use a utility called certbot. Okay, so certbot what I'll do is, let's see how to install certbot. Okay, certbot Nginx Ubuntu. So let's search in Google. So here, yeah, so this is the Electric, electronic Frontier Foundation. So this is the official website of CertBot. So uh, see certificates, this SSL certificates are provided by the certificate uh, providers. So there are so many providers uh, in the world, but uh, some of these like, I mean, we allow to pay, we allow to pay if, if your website is a very critical website. So then usually like, I mean, people go for paid certificates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a free certificate, which is available from Let's Encrypt, okay? So it has a validity of 90 days. So that means, I mean, every 90 days, we'll have to renew this certificate. So here, I'll have to select what is my web server. My website is running in Nginx and it's on Ubuntu 20, 20 or 20 above, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to select this Ubuntu and then uh, what we need is, it'll help us with the next steps. So first is like, I mean, install Snapd. Okay, it's asking us to install snapd so let's see how to install snapd so our installation is on ubuntu 
Okay, let's see whether snap is already there. Yes, it is already there. So we don't have to install snapd in our machine. So what we need is using snap, we are going to install the third bot. <clears throat> I just copied the command from the Let's Encrypt website. Okay, so it has no updates. Now next is install snap using a third bot using snap sudo snap install hyphen hyphen classic third bot. Okay, so snap third bot installed. Okay, if you see it's installed. Now what is the next step? Next is we are going to create a sim link. So it is by default there in slash snap bin third bot. Let's see whether it is there or not. Ls. Yeah, it is there. We can see here. So it is there in slash snap bin third bot. We need to point it to slash usr bin third bot. We are going to create a sim link using this command. Ln is for link and hyphen s is for soft link. Okay. So we're going to create a sim link. Okay. Now you see if you if I type third bot. Okay. The command is there. Okay. Command is there. It is asking for something. Uh, let me cancel it for now. So now what we need? Our website is running on Nginx, right? So we need to pass an argument hyphen hyphen Nginx. So let's run third bot with third bot hyphen hyphen Nginx. So this will take care of the certificate management. So I'm going to use coder and boots. It will ask us for the email. So third bot will usually send uh, alerts or reminders before the certificate is going to expire. Okay, I entered the address. So uh, you must accept the agreement. Agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> okay, so now please enter the domain name you would like to generate the certificate. Now if you see it is not uh basically listing any domain names here reason is i have not configured the domain name in the server okay so what we can do is uh, either i mean we can just paste the domain name or what we can do is we can uh, basically like i mean uh, configure the domain name in the nginx configuration so let's open slash nginx slash etc nginx sites available okay default if you see here you see the server name in our case it is dash right so instead of dash what we are going to do is we are going to keep our the one that we created here site.quadrantboots.com site.quadrantboots.com so let's see <clears throat> okay service nginx restart okay Okay, so it's up. So let's see whether in, uh, this third bot list this website. Okay, now you see it is listing the site.quadrantboots.com. Reason is I have added the domain name in the Nginx configuration. So third bot internally what it performs is it basically scans the Nginx configuration, identify all the domains that are configured in the Nginx and it will list it for you so that you can select which one you need the uh, the SSL the uh, SSL certificate. So we are going to create an SSL certificate through engine uh, third bot in this step. I selected the option number one. So what's going to happen is it is going to request a site for, uh, certificate for this site dot .com. Okay. Now you see it successfully created a certificate and it's going to expire in the month of fourth month of uh, 2023. That means three months from now from now okay so now the site has an ssl certificate by default and you see the remaining messages deploying certificate it generated the certificate it deployed the certificate and what happened now the site this url site.codernboots.com it's up let's see what happens okay so let me refresh Okay, it's giving a warning. So let me see why this is giving a warning. Let me open. Yeah, 
So it's because I mean I didn't close the browser. That's the reason. So now I opened the same URL in a fresh, fresh website, uh, fresh browser. Now you see it is opening properly. Site dot http uh, no site dot dot com and it has a padlock lock here and you see connection is secure. Okay and certificate is valid. You see the details of the certificates uh, issued by Let's Encrypt and it has a validity till it has a validity till April. Okay, so now you see this is how like I mean we create HTTPS URLs. Okay, now if I type HTTP URL, what will happen? Let's type HTTP URL. It is redirecting to HTTPS URL. So by default, it's automatically getting redirected to the HTTPS URL. Now if you see the traffic and I do the inspection, last time we did the inspection, it was going through HTTP. Now let's inspect and let's refresh. So what's happening? The request is going to HTTPS site.coderandboots.com. Okay, so it is going to, through a secure channel. Now the connection, the, the data, the payload that is getting passed, the connection is encrypted, secure. So in, with HTTP, what happens? The payload that goes is insecure. Let me explain that. So what happens is right now, if you see the request pattern, it is going from my laptop to the EC2 instance, which HTTP, what happens is the payload, the request that is going here and the response that is coming from here, it is unencrypted. Okay, unencrypted. Encrypted. Okay, so this is with HTTP. And with HTTPS, what happens? The payload is encrypted. How the payload is encrypted? There is basically a certificate associated with it. And with that certificate, it is getting encrypted. Okay, so let's see where the certificate is getting placed in the machine. So if you see, as part of this uh, cert bot, you see a directory got created and a public key and a private key got created. Okay, certificate is saved in slash etc let's encrypt site.coderinboots.com full chain.pem and the private key it has it is saved in private key.pem. Okay, certificate got generated and using the certificate, the contents are encrypted every time when you do this transactions between this client and the server. Okay, this is my laptop. browser and this is the server so in in uh, general way what happens the connection is happening through like very complicated network right so if anyone in between okay anyone in between tries to intercept your traffic if it is unencrypted unencrypted what will happen the payload they can decrypt it decode it and they can take the content so this is something called man in the middle attack so man in the middle attack is is basically what it's very highly risky attack and this is uh, a vulnerability if you use HTTP based endpoints but if you use HTTPS yes, what will happen so the co contents are encrypted so even if the man in the middle tries to intercept something he will be getting an encrypted content which he cannot read it because he don't have the key with him so he will be getting an HTTP, uh, encrypted content so man in the mid middle will will not intercept anything so we are uh, basically what is recommended HTTPS URLs are recommended. That's why browser itself in the earlier days, if you see in like, I mean, 2010-11 or even before that, if you see most of the URLs were HTTP based, but now you see every URLs are HTTPS based. And if you're using HTTP URLs, by default, browser itself will give you warnings that you cannot use. It's insecure. Okay, that now you see it's giving a lock icon. And previously, if you see when we were using HTTP URLs, it was giving an insecure icon. I hope this explanation is clear. So if you have any questions or doubt, uh, please comment below the video. I'll, I'll, I'll respond back to you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.